Hi everybody and welcome to City Scene. In this episode, we're going to get some updates on some road construction projects. We're going to also learn about Levitt at the Falls and where we are with that project. And finally, we're going to be introduced to Sioux Falls superhero who's doing some great things in our area. Hi again everybody, I'm Michelle Wellman. Up first is Shannon Austin giving us an update on some West Side road construction projects. Hi again Sioux Falls, Shannon Austin here with another street construction update. The good news is we only have a few of these left because before long it'll be snowing. We are out on the southwest part of the city at 85th Street in Louise and we welcome to the show Dina from our city engineering office. Dina, welcome. Thank you. So 85th Street from Louise to the west is under construction. Can you give our viewers an update of where we're at with the project? Uh, where we're at, as you can see behind us, we are just finishing grading up through Hughes Avenue. Um, in the next couple weeks, you'll be seeing uh, the rest of the grading completed, uh, curb and gutter will be completed, and then concrete pavement to follow. So probably in the month of August, we should have a lot of those lanes paved? Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah. So I do see some signal work going on. Give our viewers an update uh, when the project is done. Where will we have traffic signals at? We will have a new set of signals behind us at Hughes Avenue. Okay. Um, we will have new signals at um, 90th Street and then new signals at Louise Avenue. So 90th and Louise and then 85th and Louise. And so that'll yes. really help our morning commute those folks get out onto Louise in the mornings, won't it? Yes, it okay. will. So this project is, you know, is kind of hidden away because there's not a lot of traffic that currently exists on 85th Street. Um, has there been any, how have the property owners been? Has there been any complaints about the impacts of the projects or anything? No, the property owners have been great. Um, we actually don't have any property owners that access 85th Street okay. directly, so they all have alternate routes to get in and out. So it has been very a very nice, quiet project. Right. Certainly, when you look down the corridor, there's a lot of backyards, so I'm sure they'll, they're happy that their backyards are finally going to be finished. Yes, yeah, it'll yeah. be a great improvement for the backyards, both for traffic and for drainage. And so sidewalks, I assume, are included also? Yep, sidewalks will be installed on both sides. Okay, so where we've had so much rain, is that slowed the contractor at all? You know, it slowed them down for a little while. Um, obviously, sun and wind always help us out. So they have gained some of that time back. Um, but they're, they're probably just a small bit behind, but they'll still end up finishing on time. And when is that completion date expected? Uh, the traffic will be open the very end of September, first part of October. So this 85th Street has been a very active project uh, with overpasses and interchanges. Can you give our viewers just an update? Are we starting the design for the next phase? Uh, we are just talking to the consultants about starting and uh, just looking at that for the next, the next phase to the west. Great, wonderful. So with that continued design, I just wanted to update our viewers. The 85th Street overpass over Interstate 29 has been approved, but we are also studying a new interchange at 85th Street and Interstate 29, which we're right in the middle of. So there's going to be a lot of potential projects going on here in the next three to four years, isn't it? Yeah, it'll be very busy in this yep. corner. Yep. Is there anything else you'd like to tell our viewers about the project? Uh, just thank you for your patience. Uh, it's been kind of drawn out with the, with the rain, but uh, your patience is always appreciated, and uh, we'll be out of here soon. Great. Thanks so much for your time today, Dina. Thank you. We're on to the next one. Well, our final project update is still on the west side and it's on Ellis Road from Stony Creek, which is a little bit north of 22nd Street, all the way down to 41st Street. This is certainly a big project for our contractor to get done in one year, but they're still working on it. So we welcome back to the show, John Heck. John, you were here in May and we had a lot of dirt work going on. When we look behind us, there's still a lot of dirt work going on. So I'm hoping there's been some progress made. What, what are they working on right now? Yeah, Shannon, there's been quite a bit of progress made. Um, right now, they're still continuing with utilities north of 26th Street. Okay. But we've got in the mile of utilities from 41st to 26th Street. So, so a lot's been done. A lot has been yeah. done, yes. And they are uh, finishing up graveling from 41st to 32nd here today. Okay. Uh, paving will start on that section probably sometime next week, and then things will really start to roll with the paving. Okay, so that southern portion from the construction phasing we wanted to get done first because of the school. Well, are we on target to get to get that southern portion completed before school starts? Yep, we're right on target with that. Okay. Um, and we should just, just meet that deadline according to the contractor's schedule. Okay, so with the rest of the utilities, that's, you know, a lot of our citizens don't really see a lot of utility work going on. 
Um, and with the rain, that certainly provides challenges. Can you kind of walk us through what are the challenges our contractor faces when we've been getting so much rain? Well, obviously the subgrade gets very wet. So that's weight, that's far down. Right? That's and far it, down, yeah. yep, yep. And it does, uh, it does slow them down. They just have to wait for it to dry out. They really can't get in and work when it's been as wet as it has been. Um, it also affects uh, some of the grading, the fine grading. Um, we've had to do some extra dig outs of some really wet, bad material and get that out of the way. So all those things do take time and effort by the contractor to complete. So to dry out that subgrade, is that simply all it is, is just time? I mean, he doesn't go in there and work it and turn it over. It's just time. It's, it's just time. And really, the, the subgrades around here are just overall very wet. Okay. So we just have been taking it out and replacing it with some additional gravel thickness in our pavement section. OK. So with during the month of August then, so our traffic is, is limited to just 26th Street. Is 32nd open and is 22nd still open or are those closed? Currently the cross streets open on Ellis Road are 32nd Street, 26th Street, and Stony Creek. Okay. We've got 22nd Street closed right now uh, with the grading and the removal operations up there. And will 22nd stay closed through the month of August? Probably through the month of August. Um, they have to keep either 22nd Street or Stony Creek open okay. to traffic up in that neighborhood. Okay. So there's going to be, I mean, we're in August right now, so there's going to be a lot of work being done in the next three to four months, right? Yes, there's going to be a lot of work done, especially okay. concentrating on the mainline street paving, okay. getting that wrapped up, um, and then trying to fall back and pick up probably as much sidewalk and things as we can, but okay. the concentration is going to be on the mainline paving. And so our original schedule had getting, had getting was to get all of the lanes open to traffic. Do you think with the rain our contractor will still be able to meet that goal? They still um, have a schedule where they can meet that goal. Okay. Um, we're just having to maybe sacrifice some behind the curb work, okay. which was going to carry over into 2019. Right. There just might be a little bit more that that carries over into 2019 now. Okay, but certainly not the large scale closures like what we're seeing right now. No, okay. our goal is to have the road completely open by the end of this construction season, so we don't have any of those okay. full closures anymore next year. Uh, one last question. So it's certainly been an issue or you know a concern with a lot of our drivers. Do you have any advice for our drivers on getting east and west, or you know how? I would say just kind of keep tabs on what's happening out there. Don't get complacent. Uh, we always appreciate you traveling at a safe speed going through there, through the intersections and stuff. We've just been putting a big emphasis on that for the traveling public and our construction traffic as well. Right. Well, thanks so much for your time today. And I do think we're going to stop back out in a couple months to see just how much pavement we do have down. You bet. Hopefully there'll be a lot. Yes. Thanks. thanks. Back to you. Thanks, Shannon. You know, another construction project that's getting a lot of attention is Levitt at the Falls. So let's learn all about it from Mike Patton. Well, we're here today at Falls Park West in downtown Sioux Falls, and we're here today to talk about an update on an ongoing construction project creating uh, Levitt at the Falls here at Falls Park West. We broke ground earlier this spring uh, and have since been doing basically the um, infrastructure work. We've been doing site grading, underground utilities, a lot of footings and foundation walls, really building the base infrastructure that will create the amphitheater and lawn space. The Levitt at the Falls project is a partnership between uh, the National Levitt Foundation as well as the local Friends of Levitt Sioux Falls and the City of Sioux Falls with a mission to provide free outdoor concerts uh, for anybody in the community. And really what it does is creates a gathering space for people to congregate, um, converse with each other and enjoy music in a free open situation. Well, as you can see, we're starting to finally punch out of the ground where you're seeing foundation walls come up out of the ground and you can start to see the site take shape. You know, we're building the stage, which is directly behind me. We've got the support facilities as well as landscape features in the restroom building. The raised amphitheater space and stage will project out onto a lawn space. The lawn space is sized to accommodate groups anywhere from a thousand people up to 5,000 people and it's an elevated lawn space where people can gather, enjoy the shows and converse with uh, friends and family. Construction's going pretty well considering the wet conditions we've had this year. Uh, we're pretty much on schedule uh, and we will um, still meet that target date of being complete in the spring with concerts starting later next summer. 
Well, so now that we've completed a lot of the base infrastructure and the foundations and the, and the utilities are in, you'll really start to see the site start to take shape. Um, the building will start to, you know, the block walls will go up. Uh, the quartzite walls will start to follow. You'll start to see sidewalks and landscaping and boulder retaining walls that create the amphitheater space be installed. And, and you'll be able to start to envision what this place will be like. Eventually the curved roof that um, will overtop the amphitheater will be placed on and you'll start to, you'll start to see everything t come together into a, a functional space. So the goal would be to complete construction um, fully in um, early spring of next year and the goal will be to have the first performances start later that summer. A sump pump can be your first line of defense against getting water in your basement. Don't wait until it's too late to verify your sump pump is working properly. Make sure your hose discharges into your yard, away from your house, or into a stormwater or sump pump collection system. Never discharge into a sink, toilet, shower, or floor drain. Also, consider a backup system in case your home loses power. For more information, go to the city's website at siouxfalls.org slash sump pump. My hero is my neighbor because she rakes the lawn for me when I can't. She's always there whenever anyone needs a helping hand. My teacher is my hero because she always makes time for everyone. Welcome back. Did you know that every weekend there's a clinic on how to install car seats in your vehicles? Here's Steve Fessler with some more information. Hi, this is Division Chief Steve Fessler with Sioux Falls Fire Rescue. And today I'm talking with firefighter Zach Morgan. First of all, I want to congratulate you for getting through your first year probation. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, today we're talking about car seats. Yep. You are one of our car seat techs within the department. Let's see, we've got, I think, 80 some 83, techs, yeah. 83 techs. And uh, it's kind of the, uh, one of the specialties that we have on the department that gets used the most, yep. but you know, and, and can help the most too, because it's uh, helping individuals keep their children safe in their cars. Yep. And uh, so I want you to just kind of tell me a little bit about uh, our program here. When do we uh, do car seat checks? Where do we do them? You know, a few things like that. What, yep. Uh, give so, me a info. so Saturdays are our main day that we do that we do car seats. Um, we set aside time in the morning, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. That's that's our car seat event where people can come in when they have questions. Um, but that being said, anytime people have questions or need their car seat looked at or help with, um, they're, they're free to stop by any time, not just at Station 3 and any other stations, and we can help them out. But um, but that is primarily the main time that we have people come in is Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And that's, a. that's right here at Station 3, Fire Headquarters, yep. uh, 37th and Minnesota Avenue. Yep. Um, and you also said that you can, they can call, or I should say stop in to yep. any other station if they Need, need a car seat checked yep. or, or have questions. We've got texts throughout, uh, throughout the city at all the different yeah. stations that can help them out. Yep. So, you know, some of the different things to think about with the car seat and, and putting your child into it, uh, rear facing compared to forward facing, what, what are some of the differences there? Yep, so um, based on standards, we try to keep the child um, rear facing as long as possible. And, as, and we'll look at and we'll look at the car seat. Um, the car seat will have uh, a weight weight limits and height limits for for rear facing. And so we'll it's the car seat is tested yep. um, for children to be rear facing as long as possible. And we'll have a lot of parents that will come in when the child when the child starts to get a little bigger and they'll say, you know, we don't like their feet on the seat and right. things like that. Yep. Um, but we, we keep that child rear facing for as long as possible. Um, some, some reasons are that in children, their head is you know, disproportionately larger. Yep. Um, so in the event of a, front, you know, a frontal accident, when they're rear facing, it's, it's designed to you know, absorb that impact. Yep. Um, and even if, even if the, the feet are up on the seat, um, they're still a lot safer that way. So we'll keep them 
uh, rear facing as long as possible and as soon as on that car seat that they can go forward facing then we'll make that switch at that time. Okay. Yep. And then I know they also a lot of parents come with the question of going from the forward facing convertible seat yep. to a booster seat. Yes. When when can we look at doing that trans transition? Yep. So well as long as um, as long as the child can be in a in a harness in a five point harness we'll keep yep. them in there as long as possible. We start to look at whether they can be in a booster seat or without a booster seat when they're about 80 pounds, four foot nine inches, mm -hmm. but we'll make we'll seat, sit them in the seat with their back all the way and make sure that their knees are bent and that their feet are flat on the ground and that's when they can be out of, yep. out of a booster seat okay. and into a regular um, seat belt. So it really doesn't depend on age, it depends on more the, the size of the child, Correct. the weight of the child, yep. and as long as they're fitting correctly. Yep. So the biggest thing is making sure they're safe in the seat that they're in currently yes. and if they need to move up, yep. we look at that. So yep. good. Um, any other quick little tips that you can think of right offhand? Yep. So we just make sure that the when people come in, they have a lot of questions. We make sure we'll kind of walk through with them. Um, the seat if they bring in a car seat we'll make sure that it's um nothing's wrong with it it hasn't been in a car accident yep. we'll make sure it's not expired we'll make sure it's not recalled and then we'll actually um size the child to the seat uh, for for rear facing we try to make sure that the that the harness that they're in um that the top of the harness is below their shoulder or at shoulder level yep. and then it switches when they go to forward, forward facing you want it at shoulder level or above um, and so we'll, we'll size that to the child and then we'll install it, make sure they're, um, and show the parents how to install it correctly. I was going to say, that's one thing the parents are going to, when they walk away from here, they're going to be yep. well informed on how to put their child in the car seat yep. and the safety aspects of it and, and what we can expect from there. Yep. Thanks, Zach. If you'd like more information about car seats or Sioux Falls Fire Rescue, go to SiouxFalls.org fire. Thanks, Steve. Up next is Jackie Nelson giving us an inside look on our latest 80 and 18 park. Hi, I'm Jackie Nelson, Administrative Manager with Sioux Falls Parks and Recreation. Today we're at Terrace Park to talk to you a little bit about 80 and 18. 80 and 18 is our challenge for residents and visitors of Sioux Falls to visit 80 parks in 2018. To participate, you would visit the seven to eight featured parks monthly, take a picture of yourself in front of a featured landmark within that park, and submit it via Facebook or Twitter, or you may drop off at the City Center to the Sioux Falls Parks and Recreation Office. The featured 80 and 18 parks for August are Arrowhead, Faywick, Keene, Laurel Oak, Leaders, Nelson, Riverdale, and Terrace. And now I'd like to introduce Bryce Block, District Park Supervisor for Terrace Park. Hi, welcome to Terrace Park. I'm here to talk to you about Terrace Park and all the things that it has to offer. The city purchased the land in 1916, and in 1924, it was named Terrace Park. Upper Terrace Park still has the original terraces, the cobblestone walkways, and the stone steps. Colville Lake separates the east and the west side of the park. Even though there is no swimming, you can still come and feed the geese, you can come fish in the lake, or you can go canoeing or kayaking. The east side also has the Family Aquatic Center, which was built in 1994. The pool has four drop slides, it has a body slide, a tube slide, and a zero depth pool. A unique feature to the park is the Japanese gardens. The Japanese gardens were constructed in 1920s and into the 1930s. There's lots of varieties of exotic flowers and trees throughout the park. There are walkways, gazebos, pergolas, and a pond and a waterfall. It's a great place for weddings or just to come and take some photos. The east side also offers a playground, a restroom, a basketball court, a picnic shelter, and a band shell where our municipal band plays throughout the summer. On the west side of the park is the Frank L. Boyce Miracle Field. It's a specialized field for adaptive baseball. It provides a safe and fun experience for all users. The west side of the park also has eight softball fields, a picnic shelter, a playground, and a restroom. There's a lot to offer at Terrace Park, so please come and visit. For more information, you can visit our website at SiouxFalls.org slash 80 and 18. My goodness, that is one beautiful park. And finally today, we're gonna wrap it up with one of our Sioux Falls Citizen Superhero Awards. Let's learn all about them. 
I think they call me a superhero because I'm giving back to the community and not being super selfish and helping kids in general. We are in my parents' office's basement and we're basically just building birthday bags. I run a nonprofit organization called Simon Says Give that is by kids and helps kids through whether it's birthdays, backpacks, hunger, food. The birthday bags go to kids in need in the community. You have everything that you need for a birthday, whether it's cake mix, frosting, gifts, um, streamers, candles, utensils, plates. The kids are surprised because most of them haven't even had a birthday. And some of them just don't get as much as they would get in these birthday bags. They would maybe get an apple or two or something like that. Whereas we're giving them gifts, like actual gifts because their parents may not be able to afford them. I just like giving back to the community. I mean, I've always liked giving back. It's fun to see people's reactions when they learn that a 12-year-old kid is running a charity for kids. It feels good to give back. I wouldn't consider myself a superhero. Everybody can do this. Like. It's not just me who can do this. As always, everybody, thank you so much for joining me on City Scene. If you're looking for more information or you want to see this mug one more time, check us out on SiouxFalls.org or on YouTube. See you next time.